The genetic fallacy occurs when a claim is rejected based on the origin or genesis of the evidence, rather than on the actual merit of the evidence. In other words, a perceived flaw in the source of a claim is used as evidence that the claim is false. The fallacy is committed when an idea is either rejected because of its source rather than its merit. The genetic fallacy can also be reversed. It might involve acceptance of a claim merely on the basis of its source. Here's an example. This week's challenge, religion is simply the result of culture and geography. It's not the result of seeking truth. This is simply the genetic fallacy, right? What's the genetic fallacy? It's where you fault the origin of an idea to dismiss it. And uh, so, I mean, here's an example. If I were to say that I learned two plus two equals four from my kindergarten math teacher, Miss Crabapple, and then you come to me and say, oh, really? Well, you know, the, your belief that two plus two equals four comes from Miss Crabapple, but did you know that Miss Crabapple uh, is in jail, that she was arrested from embezzling from the school, that she was, you know, uh, this shady character? and then call into question my belief that two plus two equals four because the origin or the source of it was Miss Crabapple. Well, would it follow that two plus two doesn't equal four? Of course not. See, that's a genetic fallacy. You can't simply fault the origin of an idea or a belief and then dismiss it as false. We'll conclude this unit with a fallacy of appeal to consequences. This is an argument that fallaciously concludes an idea or proposition is true or false because the consequences of it being true or false are undesirable or desirable. The desirability or undesirability of the consequences is not related to the truth or falsity of the argument's conclusion or the cogency of its inference. Here's an example. Lord Denning was the judge for the infamous Birmingham Six retrial, in which six men appealed their convictions and life imprisonment sentences for bombings they did not commit. Denning, probably the most celebrated English judge of the 20th century, used the presumed consequences of a decision to dismiss the Birmingham Six's civil claim against the police. In his dismissal, he noted the following, quote, if the six men win, It'll mean that the police are guilty of perjury, that they're guilty of violence and threats, and that the confessions were invented and improperly admitted in evidence, and the convictions were erroneous. This is such an appalling vista that every sensible person in the land would say that it cannot be right that these actions should go any further. So, it was the consequences of overturning the convictions, namely the negative effects on society of the admission of police misconduct, that erroneously convinced the judge to dismiss the appeal. The story has a happy ending. Eleven years later, the men were released and restitution granted. Well, that's it for the fallacies of distraction and irrelevance. Next up, we'll take a look at the fallacies of weak induction. Until then, Best wishes.